Today's lesson is going to be a continuation of topic 2.1 or kinematics. Today we're going to be talking about the various equations. So this is just a repeat of the understandings as given by the IB curriculum. We've talked about these in the last set of slides and they're just put up here again to reiterate those understandings. First off, before we move on, I want to talk about various definitions. First off, we have distance, which is a scalar, and this is the total distance traveled, not straight line distance. Uh, for example, if you run around a 400 meter track one lap, you have gone a total distance of 400 meters. Displacement, on the other hand, is a vector. This is the straight line distance from start to finish. So if I ran around the same track, one full lap, my displacement in this case is actually going to be zero meters. We also have two adjectives, okay? We also have the adjective instantaneous, which measures uh, or calculates, describes the velocity or acceleration at a specific point in time. This is the default adjective that we would use if uh, neither instantaneous or average is put in front of velocity or acceleration, we assume we mean instantaneous. The other word is average, and this means that I'm measuring my velocity or calculating my velocity over a specific time period. In general, we'll be talking about average velocity, uh, though we could also talk about average acceleration. Uh, so we also have the words speed and velocity, speed being the scalar form, velocity being the vector form. When we talk about average speed, what we are talking about is the distance that a person has traveled over time. Uh, so remember, distance is a scalar, and it's the total distance traveled. Instantaneous speed, however, is going to be the magnitude of your velocity. Uh, it can be negative, indicating a velocity in the negative direction. Okay, uh, average velocity, just like average speed, is the vector form, and in this case, it measure, corresponds to displacement over time. The instantaneous velocity, however, is going to be the velocity at a specific point in time. If I'm looking at a position time graph, which we looked at in the previous set of slides, uh, the slope at that specific point in time corresponds to uh, your velocity. Another word of describing velocity, another way to describe velocity is the rate of change of position in formula form, delta x over delta t. Uh, if I zero in on delta x over delta t. Remember the delta symbol stands for final minus initial. This is true for the x position and true for the time variable as well. So uh, anytime we see the delta symbol it means final minus initial. As long as I'm working in one dimension, uh, one dimension the direction is going to be given in words that are opposite words, kind of like left and right, north and south, up and down we're not necessarily going to be working with angles. Sometimes it's even just forward and backwards. For acceleration, the definition for acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, delta v over delta t. Again, it's a vector, uh, and using the definitions for that delta symbol, v final minus v initial over t final minus t initial. As long as I'm in one dimension, I don't really care about the direction. It's just forward, for positive, backwards for negative. Looking at the instantaneous acceleration, that's going to be the slope of your velocity time graph, which, which we discussed last time. So that brings us to the four equations of motion. Okay, on the left-hand side we have the IB format, and on the right-hand side we have the format that we pretty much used last year. Uh, sometimes different formats, the T may have been a delta T, the D may have been a delta D, okay. Uh, a couple of changes in letters, okay. The IB likes to use the letter S to represent displacement, whereas we generally use the letter D. And they also use the letter U to represent initial velocity. U because it actually comes before V in the alphabet, so that represents initial velocity, okay. The IB data book uses the IB format, so I'm introducing that to you just so you get used to it. Okay, so the four equations, which we'll go into in a little more depth, okay, V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. Distance is equal to your average velocity, which is what V final plus V initial over two. So 
displacement is equal to average velocity times time. Final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus twice acceleration times displacement. And then displacement is equal to your uh, initial velocity times time plus one half at squared. We've all seen these equations last year. Uh, to focus in on the five kinematic variables, we have uh, position, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. Out of these five, you must have three of them. Okay, before I can solve using any of these equations, I must know three of these values. Okay, um, before I can solve for either of the other two. So let's look at these equations in a little more detail. These equations do require us to be working specifically under constant acceleration or uniform acceleration as described in the understandings. Okay, so first off, the definition of acceleration, which we talked about, is the rate of change of velocity or delta v over delta t. So looking at it in formula form, acceleration becomes v final minus v initial over t. After doing some algebraic manipulation, I end up with v final is equal to v initial plus acceleration times time or IV format, V is equal to U plus AT. So that first equation is really just the definition of acceleration. The second equation comes from velocity time graphs. Okay, If I have uniform acceleration, uh, my velocity time graph is going to be a straight line. Uh, and the area between that line and the x-axis corresponds to the distance traveled. Okay, so if I look at that, the distance traveled, d, is going to be equal to uh, half the base of the trapezoid. Okay, so there's my trapezoid, and the val various values are just v initial, v final, um, and the height of my trapezoid, or the width in, in this case, happens to be delta t. And so I end up with my other equation that says, Displacement is equal to your average velocity, vi plus vf, divided by 2, times time. So those are the two primary equations. The other equations are just going to be combinations of those two. Okay, The third motion equation just takes the two of them, solves the first equation for time. Time then becomes v final minus v initial divided by a, substitutes time into the second equation, and after some algebraic manipulation, I end up with v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2ad, uh, or in IB form, u squared equals v squared plus 2as. And the fourth equation, same two equations, but now I'm going to actually substitute for v final. Okay, so v final now becomes vi plus at. Uh, again, I'll manipulate a few things algebraically, uh, and I find um, that displacement is equal to uh, vit plus one half at squared. Okay, so those are the four equations, which are really just two, but rather than manipulate them algebraically each time, uh, we start just keep four. So putting them into table form, uh, we have the four equations. Notice there's a fifth equation. Okay, there is a fifth equation, but we almost never use it, uh, so I don't go into that one. Okay, but each one of these four or five equations is missing one of the kinematic variables. The first one doesn't have displacement, second one doesn't have time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, it's that missing kinematic variable that's going to help us decide which one of these five equations to use. Uh, and so if I don't care about that variable, I given three of them, okay, let's say I'm given v final, v initial, and acceleration and I want to find time, that means I don't care what the value of displacement is. Okay, That's the missing kinematic variable. Use that equation, in this case the first one, to solve for time. Okay, The last one, the fifth equation, yes the fifth equation exists but you can always get there using a combination of the other two, uh, other four equations as I demonstrated in the derivations. Okay, Thank you.